What's going on, folks? Welcome to episode 91. We are back to our Monday afternoon regular upload. But if you would like twice weekly uploads in April, I'm going to need a thousand likes on this video. Can't believe I have to bargain with you guys for these things just to click a button. But go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, today, we are playing a ton of poker. It's about 2 p.m. and we are here at Grand Villa. You'll notice this place from some of the earlier vlogs where it all began. We are back here. I've got my various liquids and fluids with me. But we're going to play some 1, 3, 2, 5, 5, 10 here, whatever they are running. And then we're going to play the first home game of this vlog. It is a 1, 3, $1,000 max from another YouTuber. It's a lot bigger than me, so you probably know him. It's Greg Goes All In. And it's going to be the first home game of the vlog. So I'm pretty excited for that. Let's go and get this day of poker started. We are playing some 1-3 here at Villa, 400 max. We sit with the max in the first interesting hand. We have an under the gun limp, a raise to 15 for the small blind. I look down at Jack-10 off in the big blind. I decide to get a little bit aggressive with it and raise it up to $50. Folds around the small blind does make the call, so we're going to heads up to a flop. And it's pretty good. It's ace, six, deuce, two spades, one club. Four of them definitely going to bet all my hands for a small size. So when he checks to me, that is just what I do. 35 into the middle, my opponent makes the call. Turns nice. We turn middle pair with the Jack of Hearts. My opponent once again checks it over. And I think his range here is going to be a lot of pocket pairs, like 9s, 8s, 7s, 5s, 4s, 3s. And then also some Ace, X. So I don't think we're going to get value from worse. And I also don't think he's going to fold an Ace. So no, not much point in betting here with this hand. So I check it back. River is the 4 of Diamonds. My opponent once again checks it over. Could go for some thin value here, but I think he just has a little bit too much ace X for me to want to do that. So I'm just gonna take it to showdown. I check it back, and we are up against Pocket Queens. Okay, on to the next hand. Moving things along, we pick up a, a more real hand this time. Under the gun is limped, and I make it 15 with ace 10 off in the low jack. You get a caller from the cutoff as well as the big blind and the limpers so going four ways to this flop of ace jack nine all spades. Checks to me four ways. I don't really want to bet this out. So I'm just going to start with a check here and now cut off bets out for $20. Big blind folds, under the gun folds, and for this price and considering how little he has behind, I think we're just going to go with our hand here, try and preserve our equity and make him pay if he's got a spade. So all in, $137 into the middle. My opponent makes the call. Hence the turn. It is the deuce of spades, not a good card, River. The six of hearts. My hand is tabled, and now my opponent rolls over. Also ace 10, but with a spade, that one is not going to go our way. And we're going to reload again. In this next hand, we have a hijack raise to 15. Cutoff is called, and we look down at 7-6 suited on the button. Kind of want to squeeze here, but I look over a hijack stack, and he's only got like $250 in his stack. So can't really re-raise. I even think calling's pretty bad here, considering how short he is. And it's a 5x open, but... I can't fold 7-6 suited, so I toss in the call. We're going three ways to a flop, and it's pretty nice. 10-6-6 six, six, rainbow. Checks to me, so I'm going to start with the betting. I always go one-third on these multi-way flops, so 15 in the middle. Original Razor makes the call and cut off folds. Turn is the five of spades. My opponent once again checks it over. He's got 220 behind. The pot is around 80, so we're going to have to bet around 80% here to get it all in by the river. So I put $55 into the middle. My opponent once again snap calls. We're off to the river. It is the jack of spades. The backdoor flush does get there. Maybe pocket jacks have improved, but I really think he's going to be betting that the flop. But anyways, when he checks to me, it doesn't matter what he has. We have trips. We're going to have to go for max value. I ship it all in, 165, and we get snap called. I table my hand, and my opponent has pocket aces that we cracked. So almost back to even here, and I think we're playing 2-5 now. It doesn't take long for us to get involved in a hand at this new 2-5 table. The under the gun plus two players raised to $20. And just two hands previous to this, he had opened to 25 with a premium. So I'm looking at a smaller sizing and I'm definitely going to attack it. So I three bet the king six suited up to 65. Folds around and my opponent does make the call. Heads up to a flop, which is quite nice. It's three, three, deuce, two diamonds. Considering his raise came from early position, I don't think he's going to have too many threes in his range. He's just not going to be opening 4-3 suited or anything like that. Maybe 
you know, he's got ace three, but other than that, this is a pretty good board for me. It's going to be quite neutral, which means I have the better hands. So when he checks to me, I'm going to start with a small bet with almost all my range here, I think. 50, and my opponent makes the call. Turn is the five of spades. We pick up a gut shot to the good side this time. Uh, when he checks to me, I kind of want to keep betting here. And I want to size up so that we can get it all in by the river. Up a pretty sizable bet of $300 into 237 and over bet. My opponent once again thinks about it for quite a while. And then makes the call. Can we get there on the river? The river is the ace of diamonds. A card that's going to be very, very good for me. So my opponent can't have too many flushes calling an overbet out of position, as well as I still retain some ace-king uh, type bluffs, like ace-king with spades, ace-queen with spades, so overall really good card for me, which is quite interesting because now my opponent leads out for $500. Nothing to do here. He's only got 400 behind. I'm not going to waste any time fake tanking, so I put my opponent all in. If he has a full house, he's got a full house. That's just it. And he actually goes quite deep into the tank. I don't think anyone's ever folding this spot. But getting a little bit worried that he might. But after a couple minutes, my opponent does stick it in. We show and we are doubling up in one of the first hands of this 2-5 session. Let's try and keep the run good going. We pick up pocket aces this time. We are now at the main table. It is a 2-5 with a mandatory $10 straddle, which I'm more than happy to play. I pick up the aces in the low jack and make it 25 before the player to my left announces some even better news and makes it $80. Folds back around to me and we're actually quite deep even though the straddle is on. Uh, we are about 3,000 effective, so 300 big blinds to play with. So we're going to put more money into this pot. I go ahead and put in the four bets. I'm going to do about 3x out of position considering how deep we are. So I make it $250. My opponent doesn't think for too long, maybe 10, 15 seconds. He picks up his cards, flashes me pocket queens, and folds. What's going on? Does everyone hate pocket queens here? We're 300 big blinds effective. He's in position. He folds queens, and I actually have aces. Oh. Take me back to Dallas. Button is open to $35. I look down a pocket, 10's in the big blind. I think it's a mandatory re-raise, so we may make it $140, and only the button makes a call. Heads up to a flop of king, eight, four, two clubs, one diamond. I think with the 10 of clubs, we can definitely go for a small bet here. I think without the 10 of clubs, this would just be a pure check. But this time I do decide to put in a small bet of 100. My opponent makes the call, and we're gonna take a turn. It is the six of hearts. Card's going to be a little bit better for my opponent, and I'm going to start putting some of these medium strength hands into my checking range. This pocket 10s is going to fit pretty nicely there. I check, and we face a really fast check back. I think this is going to indicate a medium strength hand, something like pocket 9s, 9-8 nine suited, something like that. I don't think it's going to have too much 8-7 or 6-7, six, 6-5, six, those kinds of hands with the combo draw, because I think he would spend a little bit of time to think about if he did want to bet or not. So I think he's got something like... 10 8 suited, jack, I don't know, maybe a king, a weak king, maybe some pocket nines, something like that. But we're going to take a river. It is the five of hearts. I'm not too worried about the straight, as I do think he would have bet a seven on the turn, or at least thought about it. So I think he's mostly got like pocket nines here, maybe some 9 8 suited, maybe the same hand as us. He could also have queens, because apparently people just have queens in very passive lines. But I think I'm going to go for some very thin value. It can't be too, too big. But I also think this might be a bit too thin. But I also really get surprised when people just hero me off with ace high when I, when I play like this. So I'm going to go for it. I put in $200 and my opponent goes deep into the tank. He is thinking about it for quite a while. Assembling some chips. He looks like he's got Colin chips. Come on, put it in there. Put it in there. Don't have queens. And my opponent does just that. He calls and tables pocket. Jacks. Ah. Ever so slightly too thin. I don't know. I think maybe it's still good. Who knows? Who knows? On to the next hand.
We have a fun but very unnecessary hand coming up. I open the pocket fives and the cutoff to 25, and only the straddle makes the call. Heads up to a flop of ace, king, three, two spades, one club. Opponent checks it, and on these boards, I only play over bet or check. And I like these low pocket pairs in there at some frequency. So I throw in a bet of $75, about 120% pot, and my opponent makes a pretty quick call. Off to the turn, it is the six of diamonds. My opponent once again checks it over. And I kind of do want to have a six in this spot to keep uh, barreling, but I also have so much value that can just keep going for uh, huge bets. So I'm going to add a few more blessings there. I look over to stack. He's looking like around 1,200 behind. So we're going to fire out another over bet. This time, a whopping $250 into the middle to set up an over bet river shove. My opponent once again makes a pretty quick call. Not feeling great about this, but the river is the three of hearts, a really good card as you know, ace three and king three are your main concerns when uh, facing this, as well as pocket threes. So this is going to eliminate a lot of combos of hands. And now we're going to put him in a gross hero call spot where he can only really have a six and ace queen, maybe ace jack as his call downs. And that doesn't seem fun in a single raise pot, does it? So my opponent checks it once again. And as much as I don't want to fire this bet, I think we have to. I am all in for $900. And we don't get snap called. My opponent does give it some thought. And after a little bit of humming and hawing, decides to release his cards, and we're going to get that one through. All right, folks, we're taking off from Grand Villa. Played some 1 3, played some 2 5. Uh, pretty okay session. We were up 1300 and change, numbers being around here. And now we're heading down into Greg's game. 1 3, 1000 max. Let's win even more money. Let's go. We are now at Greg's home game, playing some 1 3. My VPIP in this game was approaching Alan Keating style levels, and I was not pulled into three bets. And I don't think I was pulled into four bets either. So there are a lot of hands. We hit quite a few flops because of just how many hands we're playing, and overall a very fun session. But let's get into it. We have a low jack raise to 10. High jack has called. I am not folding a suited king in this game. I make the call as well. Go three ways to a flop of ace, king, king, two diamonds, one club. Low jack bets out for 15, high jack folds. I don't want to have too many raises on this board, so I just call. Turn is the seven of clubs, introducing two flush draws now. My opponent keeps betting, this time for 85, an over bet. Getting a little bit dicey here, but we still have trips, so we're going to call one more time. River is the seven of spades. Seems all right. Uh, none of the draws got there. We do have a full house. We do still lose to aces and ace king, but... How likely are those? So when my opponent bets out for full pot, 225, we just got a call and hope we don't get coolered. And we are actually good. My opponent says he has an ace. That is no good versus my full house. And we're going to scoop a pretty nice pot here for 1-3. The very next hand, we pick up another premium 7-deuce off and we make it $20 to go. The 7-deuce game is on, which means that every player at the table will owe me $10 if I win and show, which is a $60 bounty. Uh, only the straddle makes a call, so we're going heads up to a flop, which is quite nice. It's ace, ace, nine, rainbow. Unless my opponent has an ace, we are probably going to win this hand. He checks it, and I start with a small bet of 15. My opponent continues. Turn is the six of spades. Doesn't change a whole lot. Just going to keep barreling away when my opponent checks. $60 into the middle, and my opponent does release, and we get to table the seven deuce and collect our $60 bounty. Continuing with the theme of only playing premiums in home games, I raise the 10-6 suited under the gun to $10. We get one caller from the hijack, another caller on the button before the big blind puts in the squeeze to $55. In home games, I do not fold to three bets, no matter how garbage my hand is. So I toss in the call, and so does the button. Going three ways to this flop, which is really nice, it's 9 8 6 one spade we have the gut shot to the good side. We got bottom pair. We got an overcard, backdoor flush draw. So when big blind bets out $50, I'm going to start to apply the pressure right away. We're quite deep with a big blind, probably about 1,000 effective. So I bump it up to 200. Button now commits his entire stack of 125. Big blind gets out the way, and we are going heads up. The turn is the four of spades, giving us a backdoor flush draw. River 
the 10 of clubs completing the most obvious straight draw there is, but giving us two pair. My opponent shakes his head and says, you were good the whole way, so we are going to pick up, oh, what is that, a third pot in a row. Let's go. We open up 8-7 offsuit on the button to $10, and only the big blind makes the call. Heads up to a beautiful flop of 7-7-3 rainbow. My opponent checks to me. I want to bet about one third here, but I'm not going to bet $7, so $5 it is. And good news to us, my opponent raises to 20 don't want to go crazy here and blow them off as we have a 7. It's going to be very unlikely that he's got anything here. And if we do raise, we're only getting called by a 7 or pocket 3s probably. So just going to call here and take a turn. Turn is the queen of diamonds. Doesn't change a whole lot. My opponent bets once again, but only for $20. It kind of seems like he's got a pocket pair here. Or maybe an ace high, maybe a 3, maybe a queen with like a backdoor flush draw. And then now he's trying to get some value, but... He's got a little bit too much behind to just call this small bet, so I'm going to raise it up to $80. My opponent doesn't think for too, too long and makes the call. River is the queen of hearts, so now we do lose to some queen X hands, and my opponent goes ahead and leads out all in for 140. If he's got it, he's got it. We call, and we're up against pocket nines. So we are going to take that one down with trips, and we are on a roll in this home game. In this next hand, we have a hijack raise to 10. Cutoff has called, and I look down at pocket jacks on the button. Good enough for a squeeze. I make it 55 to go. Another player to my left puts in the cold four bet up to 175. Folds back to me. We are quite deep. I don't want to just go with it with pocket jacks for like 400 big blinds. So just going to call here. We go to a flop, which isn't great. It's king, seven, four, two hearts, one club. My opponent continues with a bet of 125, and I really wanted to fold here, but it seems a little bit too tight, especially with a 7-deuce game going on, and this game's been pretty heavy pre-flop action as well. I think we can just let this one go, though, to be honest. But I make the call. Turn is the 10 of diamonds. Opponent doesn't think for too long, and then overbet shoves all in for 700 and change. And now I'm getting a little bit suspicious with this very large sizing. Would he really do this with aces, kings, ace, king, or pocket tens? I don't know. I don't think so. It just seems a little bit wild, but I don't know. I get a little bit curious. I don't really want to throw in my cards, but calling also seems bad, especially since I was going to fold on the flop. So I just decide to randomize. If I pull the jack of spades, I will call. If I pull the jack of clubs, I will fold. And we pull... Jack of clubs. So we are folding this hand, and my opponent luckily had the ace king. So 50 50 chance to get stacked there, but we avoid that one. We are playing a no limit hold'em double board bomb pot. These are quite a bit of fun. So we have eight of spades, five of diamonds, and we get two flops. First one is seven, six, three, two spades, one club, and the bottom board is seven, six, deuce, two hearts, one club. So we have the exact same open ender on both boards. Text around to the hijack who now puts in a pretty sizable bet of $50. Could raise, could call, this time I just decide to call, and this invites the low jack in as well. Three hand into the turn, it is the nine of clubs on top, as well as the seven of spades on the bottom. So we make the second nuts on the top, and not a whole lot going on on the bottom board. Text the hijack who once again puts another bet of 200. It really sucked to run into 10-8 here, but I don't think there's much we can do with an open ender, as well as the second nuts on the other board. So we make the call, and Lojak gets out the way. The rivers. On the top board, it is the queen of spades on the bottom, the deuce of hearts. So we have nothing but eight high on the bottom, and the back door flush did get in on the other board. Now my opponent moves all in for 270. Not much we can do. Let's hope he doesn't have 10-8. Let's hope he's just not just cooling us with a flush or something. I make the call. My opponent rolls over. Five, four, off. We straight over straight him on one board. And our eight high is good on the other board. And we scoop this 1160 pot with eight high on one board. What a double board bomb pot. In this next hand, Greg goes all in, has joined our table. It's his first couple hands. He is in the small blind, but under the gun has raised to 10. I looked down a 7-5 suited, an absolute premium. 
I'd bump it up to $35. Folds around to Greg in the small blind, who now puts in even more money, $100 to go. Big blind folds, original razor folds, and with a hand this strong, we are never folding here. We toss in the call, let's take a flop. It is king, 10, deuce, two spades, one club. So we got a pretty, pretty bad flush draw, but it is a flush draw nonetheless. So when Greg bets 75, just going to call here. I think raising is a little bit insane given how deep we are. So tossing the call, turn is the 10 of diamonds. The card's going to be quite a bit better for me than it is for him, as I am going to be calling a lot more 10s, and he shouldn't really be betting too many out of position, as well as he is the 4 better, and I'm the 3 better. I'm going to have a lot more 10s. Anyways, Greg keeps firing for 225 this time, and we could already consider folding. You know, we're just dead to pocket kings or king 10 if he has it, but... Uh, I didn't come here to fold. I make the call. Let's take a river. It is the deuce of spades. So we sort of get there, but it's a double paired board. And it's a little bit iffy. I don't know what we're going to do if Greg bets. And he does just that. An over bet shove all in. I think it was like 1,050 to 1,100. So, you know, quite a sizable over bet considering the pot was about $800. And now we're in a gross spot. So let's think about what he's repping first. And then we can decide what to do with our hand. Because if there's just like infinite hands that beat us, there's no point thinking about this. Is he going to have a hand like Ace Queen of Spades that is going to go for this over bet on the river? I don't think so. I can still have seven deuce here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can definitely have a lot of 10x. So I think flushes are getting a little bit thin, especially for this sizing. Uh, could he have a deuce? I think he could definitely have seven deuce here. So I am quite worried about that hand. I'm worried about pocket kings. But I think king 10 suited might just fold pre-flop, and there's only two of those left. So now that I think about it, we're only really worried about pocket kings as well as seven deuce. And I don't think he has too many 10x in his range. It's just hard. Not a lot of people are going to 4-bet a hand like Ace-10 suited. So we don't have to worry about that. His range is quite narrow. But he also did bet quite small in the turn relative to the size of the pot, which kind of makes me feel like he already had pocket kings. I think if he had 7-deuce, he would size up on the turn to get a more normal size on the river, like 300-ish on the turn. So when it comes down to it, I think he's just repping pocket kings or nothing. But it's very credible that he has pocket kings here. So I decide once again to randomize it. If I pull the seven of spades two times, I am going to make this $1,000 hero call. The first card I pull is the seven of spades. So we're going one more time, 50% chance. And now Greg asks me if it's binding. It always is if I say I'm doing this. And he flips over ace five of diamonds <laughs> so there's a sweat if we pull a seven of spades we win this two thousand eight hundred dollar pot we pull a five of spades we fold let's take it over to my good friend keevan his pov he was also at the game vlogging i will link his channel in the description below so you can check him out also link greg's there too but let's go over to his view take a look see if i can pull the seven of spades for two thousand dollars take it away Okay. Oh, last okay. one. <laughs> Shit, one more seven and you're calling? Yeah, one more seven, I'm gonna make the call. Finding? Finding. Finding. Oh my god! Oh my god! This one, come on, come on, Fire! Oh my god! Oh my god! Monster! <laughs> And just like that, we rip the seven of spades out. We make the call. We double up and win a nearly $3,000 pot in a 1-3 game. Sorry, Greg. We have a slightly better suited one gapper this time. Queen, 10 of spades. I make it 10 to go. And now the button puts in a re-raise to 35. Both back to me. We are very deep. I think it's got 2,000 behind. So I'm going to toss in the call here. You know, heads up to a flop of 10, 9, deuce, 2 hearts, 1 diamond gonna think about check raising here but when i check it over my opponent puts in a very large bet a 2x over bet of 150 all right this is fun 
Let's battle. I'm going to make the call of my top pair. We're going to take a turn. It is the Seven of Diamonds. Not a great card. Some eight sixes get got there, nine sevens, and the board's getting quite connected now. I check once more, and my opponent fires another bet of 225. A little bit on the small side. I thought he was going to size up quite a bit, but I think this turn's a little bit too dicey. We're going to make the call. The river It's really nice. It's a queen of clubs. I'm not sure if we needed it or not, but it's always nice to have top two. If he does bet, we are probably just going to rip it in for value. But when I check it, my opponent quickly checks behind. That is good news. I show we're winning almost every single hand here. We pick up 10-8 off in the hijack, make it $10 to go. Folds around to Greg in the big blind, who puts in the re-raise up to $35. Our hand is so strong, we can make two types of flushes, straights, two pairs, trips, quads. So I make the call, and we go to a flop, and what do you know, we flop trips. Jack, 8-8, eight, eight, two clubs, one heart. We even have backdoor straight draw as well. Uh, my opponent checks to me. I am going to bet here. I make it 35 we get check raise up to $100. Music to my ears. I'm just going to call here and play some turns. Turns all right. It's a nine of diamonds. So we do have an open ender. It doesn't change a whole lot though. We're still losing the same hands and we're still beating the same hands even with the straight. So it's kind of a neutral card, I guess. Uh, big line now slows down and checks. And I'm going to get a little bit trappy here. I'm only really worried about a jack or a club on the river. So I'm not too, too concerned. I'm just going to check this one back and see if we can get it all in on the river. River is the deuce of hearts, a huge brick. And my opponent once again checks it. Now, if I had a hand like 10-9 or missed clubs that were really low, I would want to go all in. So no different when we have value. I move all in for $615, a slight overbet of 2.2x or so. And my opponent doesn't snap fold. In fact, he thinks about it for, gives us some thought, and then makes the call, and we are getting paid on our trips again. We have something like a $4,000 stack at a 1-3 game. In this next hand, we are playing six-handed, and the stakes have gone up to 1, 3, 6, 12, 25, 50. I am in the $50 straddle on the button, and I looked at a pocket nines. Not bad when you put on the $50, and even better... Big Blind announces all in for $1,000. When it gets to me, we are obviously calling here for 20 Big Blinds. And we are going to run it once for a $2,000 pot with pocket nines. Flop comes down. King 6-6 six, six, rainbow. Turn. The four of diamonds. River is the ten of diamonds. My opponent says, you are good. And we are building the stack up to over $5,000. Okay, we're playing against the same opponent that we just uh, stacked with the pocket nines. But she played a lot of hands with him. He is very action. Uh, we make it 10 with ace jack off. He now re-raises to $75. Small blind cold calls. And we're not going anywhere with ace jack. Yeah, heads or three ways to a flop of king, six, five, two clubs, one spade. Small blind checks, I check, and cutoff puts in a pretty large bet of 150. Small blind folds, and normally this should just be a fold, but against this guy, we are definitely down to play some street poker. I toss in the call. Turn is the six of clubs. Pretty nice card, actually. It's going to eliminate some two pairs, some sets. So I'm going to check once more. And when my opponent bets out for 275, I don't think there's anything to do here but play some more street poker. We once again call with ace high. I think it's good. River is the 10 of diamonds. I check once again. We had a quick check back. I announced ace high. And it's good. It's good. Good. <laughs> we are just crushing this game, almost losing no hands here. This next hand, we are going to get up some shenanigans. I make it $10 with the queen jack of diamonds in the hijack. Folds around to the button who makes the call. We're going heads up to this flop of 10, 3, deuce, 1 diamond, 2 spades. So we got quite a few backdoors here. I start with a small bet of $10 and we get snap raised to 500 <laughs> Yeah, you think this is where the hand ends, but I ask him for a reasonable raise, and I say I can do 25, and then we negotiate further to 50, to 75, and then we land on $85, so he's going to raise it up to 85, I tell him I've got a ton of backdoors, so I make the call, and what do you know, we turn the 8 of diamonds, we now have 2 overs, a 
gut shot as well as a flush draw. And I probably should have looked at his stack. I thought we're about one SPR here, but we're not. And I go ahead and lead all in 655 because I know if I check it over to him, he's just going to shove on me. And we probably can't call. But this way, maybe he'll fold a hand like pocket fours or pocket fives. So, I don't know. This is street poker. Who cares? Uh, my opponent makes a pretty quick call. Uh, he does want to run it twice because he doesn't have another buy-in. So, I'll, I'll break my rule this one time. And we take a river. The first river is the Jack of Clubs. The second river, the Queen of Hearts. We show our hand and we're up against three deuce off. We lose both runs. <laughs> Damn it. Next hand. So this is the final hand I've recorded. I have one more hand to go over right after this. But for this hand here, we have seven deuce off. We got an under the gun raise to 10. Cutoff has made it $60. And we're going to put in the cold four bet up to 150. Under the gun gets out the way, but cutoff does make the call. We're going heads up to a flop of king 10 for rainbow. I'm going to start with a small bet here, and I'm going to size down even more than I normally would, as the SPR is very low, it's a very dry flop as well, and it's a 4-bet pot. So I put in $50, my opponent makes the call. Hence the turn, it is the 6 of hearts, a pretty much a blank, and to get all in by the river, we're going to need to bet around 60% on both streets. So I put in a bet of 175 a little bit too, too, a little bit too small, maybe like 225 would be better, but my opponent once again calls. River is the five of clubs, pretty much a blank still. I don't expect him to have any two pairs that are going to uh, make make a hand this way. So hopefully he doesn't have ace-king. We are all in. And we put my opponent in the blender. We don't get snap call. Feeling pretty good about my hand. Feeling pretty good. And after a little bit of thought, my opponent does make the fold. And we are going to pick up yet another seven-deuce bounty. And I think we had a stack of around $7,000 at this point. Okay, get ready for this hand. The biggest pot I have ever played at 1-3. And it's a doozy. So, I start with ace-queen off in the hijack. I raise it up to $10. Folds around to the small blind, who is the maniac, who bumps it up. Just your normal 50x3 bet. Up to $500. He's been doing this a lot. It doesn't matter what hand he has. $500 is going in. So I'm feeling pretty good about ace-queen here. And I decide to rip it all in for $3,000 effective. For value. And we get a snap called. But I'm still feeling pretty good about our hand. You know, he's playing very, very crazy. But we're going to take a flop. We're running it once the flop is... King, 10, 4, 1 club, 2 hearts. So we do have a gut shot. The turn is the 6 of clubs, river, the 5 of spades, and my opponent rolls over, ace, king. Just your standard 1,000 big blind pre-flop cooler, ace, queen versus ace, king. What can you do? What can you do? Uh, shortly after this, the game does break, but we are going to book a pretty tidy profit here. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. I hope you really enjoyed this video. We won quite a bit of money, around $1,400 over at Grand Villa, and then another $2,000 at Greg's Game for a total of 3,400 and change numbers here. Pretty good day. We unfortunately could not book ourselves a $5,000 uh, 1-3 win. We unfortunately ran into that setup hand for 1,000 big blinds, ace-queen versus ace-king pre-flop. You know, what can you do? If you guys think I misplayed that hand, feel free to post your incorrect opinions down below. But that is it for me. I will see you all next week. Thank you so much once again. Goodbye.